Hello, my name is Bence Fazekas and please let me introduce you to my thesis Distractive Driver Behavior Detection Using Spiking Neural Networks. In 2019, just in the United States alone, 3,142 people were killed and 424,000 people were injured just in accidents caused by distractive drivers. A bulk of these accidents could have been prevented by driving monitoring systems. Therefore, it is a growing need in the automotive industry to create uh, safer cars and ensure uh, driving safety. Therefore, NCAP uh, will grant from 2025 2 out of 5 stars for the driving monitoring systems of the cars. A uh, subsystem of uh, such system is uh, driver behavior detection. So, what is uh, driver behavior? Driver behaviors are different activities which are incl include some distraction for the driver and cause uh, them to disturb their attention from driving. And uh, the goal of this project is to identify such uh, distractive behaviors. This is this problem is interpreted as a classic image classification problem. There are six classes eating, drinking, smoking, phoning, normal and anomalies. And the goal is to recognize these uh, classes. However, it has to be done with low latency as well. And false alarms have to be avoided because the drivers would get annoyed and turn off these systems in the car if they would find them uh, annoying and disturbing. Mm. This problem belongs to the computer vision domain. And Computer vision problems include pattern recognition, image classification, object detection, and object segmentation as well. And the most advanced computer vision techniques include machine learning and neural networks. And what are neural networks? Neural networks are an information processing paradigm. Their basic building blocks are neurons. The neurons are highly interconnected via directed edges and each neuron receives its input, processes it, and sends its output uh, to its connected neurons. And through the training process, each neuron learns the weights and biases for its input. Therefore, it is able to interpret and process uh, complex patterns in its input data. Uh, convolutional neural networks are the most common image processing uh, techniques. They perform great because they can interpret spatial information, for example, the form of a dog's ear, or for this case, the outlines of a drink. Mm. Convolutional networks utilize uh, convolutional and pooling layers to process uh, visual information. And usually at the end of these networks, there are some fully connected uh, layers which learn the information extracted by the convolutional layers. And convolutional neural networks are immensely powerful ML tools. However, th they have a huge uh, research resource requirements, which leads to the main problem of the automotive industry, is that the resources are extremely limited. This is due to the fact that the ECU or the electrical control unit in the cars have low computational capacity and storage space. The origin of this limitation is financial, since it is expensive to install hardware accelerators into each car. Moreover, only low latency solutions can be used, since whether an accident happens or not can be decided in a matter of milliseconds. Therefore, only lightweight and fast solutions are applicable in this industry. And a possible solution to these problems are spiking neural networks. They are a biologically plausible neural network implementation because their main functionalities are based on the biological brains. And a huge benefit of these networks that is it uh, possible to create neuromorphic hardware accelerators. And using these accelerators, um, the, these networks can run with lower power requirements. They require less computational power, and moreover, they have a much smaller latency as well. And another huge benefit of uh, these neuromorphic accelerators is that they are cheaper than other visual hardware accelerators. And how do spike 
spiking neural networks differ from other artificial neural networks. Uh, firstly, they utilize the concept of time. They receive their input as uh, presynaptic spikes, and these spikes are, st are stimulating the neurons. And through this uh, stimulation, the neurons are gathering the membrane potential. However, uh, these, uh, pot this potential decays over time. Therefore, if the net uh, neuron is not stimulated for a while, then it will start to lose its potential. Um, and when the firing threshold of a neuron is reached, then it emits a postsynaptic spike as, a, as its output. Therefore, both its input and output are these so-called spike trains. And the model used for this project is a two-layer spiking neural network. It consists of an excitatory and an inhibitory layer. The goal of the excitatory layer is to uh, stimulate the network and create some excitement. And the inhibitory layer is to try to contain these uh, signals. And the output of the network is based on the excitatory layer. Therefore, each excitatory neuron belongs to a group which based on the input classes. And the output of the network is the last fired excitatory neuron. It is based on the concept from neuroscience where in even the human brains each uh, different uh, stimulus um, activates different parts of the brain and the model is trained via voltage clamping which uh, sets the output of a randomly chosen neuron in the correct group to its firing threshold therefore it is guaranteed that the right neurons will fire and it uh, it fastens the convergence of the network. Therefore, this is a supervised training method. And how was the data collected? Well, this project used a proof of concept data set for driving monitoring system. It contained 204 collections from uh, 192 individuals. Uh, the individuals are from balanced ethical backgrounds and they have different clothing or accessories through each uh, collection. Uh, one collection contains uh, roughly 18 images. They are all labeled via one hat encoding. And on the right, you can see an example from the data set, where on the left, there are the IDs of each image, which, uh, is, which consists of its original data collection and then the number of the image. And on the right side, there are the one hot encoded labels. And if a column contains a one, then that image belongs to that category. In this data set, there are no such cases when one image would belong to two or more categories. However, it would be possible in real applications. For example, a person could phone and smoke uh, at the same time, but it's highly unrecommended while driving. And through the data exploration, there were 3,349 3, labeled images in the dataset, and they were one hot encoded into six classes. And I've separated 70% of the training, uh, the dataset to, to the training set, and 30% uh, to the validation set. It's important to mention that. Uh, images from one collection belong to either to the training set or to the validation set. Therefore, there is no data leakage by the same person is mm, phoning two times, one in the training set and one in the validation set, even though he has a different shirt, for example. And as you can see, the phoning is the largest class followed by the normal and it can be easily explained that phoning causes the greatest uh, distraction while driving and it is also the most common cause for accident therefore it is um, it makes sense to have that as the largest class and second in the normal one since people would like to avoid false alarms since that would that way the drivers and then comes uh, smoking and eating 
and lastly the anomalies and how did this uh, neural network actually perform? Well, it achieved 48% uh, accuracy for six classes, which is not good, but at least better than randomly guessing. Uh, and interestingly, it also performed better than, better than the state-of-the-art neural network ResNet50. This is, uh, I've trained the ResNet50 with uh, pre-trained uh, weights for the convolutional layers and I've inserted a uh, last fully connected layer uh, for it to learn from the features extracted from the convolutions. However, it was not enough and the uh, spiking neural network model actually performed better. And this model is currently far from deployment. However, it shows promises and the gains by using spiking neural networks might outweigh the slightly better performance of uh, other convolutional networks. And an alternative approach to this problem could have been that change it to an object detection problem combined with a body pose detection or body pose tracking. So for example, a person is holding a chocolate bar in its right hand and the system identifies the person's skeleton, also this right hand, and that the food is in the right hand or it's close to it. Because, for example, it, if there would be a chocolate bar on the person's shirt or just in the background, it could confuse the system and lead to false alarm. Therefore, it is crucial to combine object detection with body post tracking as well. So the conclusion is that spiking neural networks offer a valid alternative for other artificial neural networks in the automotive industry. They have a huge training time compared to convolutional neural networks due to their non-differentiable transfer function. However, the benefits of, uh, through that deployment sig significantly outweigh the drawbacks while developing these models. And lastly, the data set used in this project is not large enough for a proper evaluation of convolutional networks or any neural network applied for this problem. Thank you for your attention.